Here is a detail of the capitals, the Corinthian capitals that are used here. What's characteristic of Corinthian capitals is that they have, like the Ionic, they have volutes, these spiral volutes, but they are much more, uh, they are much smaller and much more delicate, and they are, in a sense, incorporated into the flowering plant. This is called an acanthus plant, A-C-A-N-T-H-U-S. Acanthus plants grow all over Italy. You see them everywhere. Uh, so they are, just imi they are just copying a plant that is indigenous uh, to Italy. They use those acanthus leaves that seem to grow out of the column uh, to incorporate the spirals. And there's always a, uh, a, a prominent central flower uh, that is also part of this motif. It's important to note at the beginning that while the Greeks used the Doric and the Ionic order almost exclusively, the Greeks did invent the Corinthian order. They used it in very late Hellenistic times, but quite infrequently. The Romans use all three. But we are going to see very quickly that they decide pretty early on that the, Ion that the Corinthian capital is their capital. And almost every building, we'll see some exceptions, but almost every building we'll see in the course of the semester uses the Corinthian capital. Why did they take to the Corinthian capital in particular? Uh, this is something we can think about in the course of the semester and debate. I think it has to do probably with two major reasons. One, it was particularly decorative, very highly decorative, more so than the others. But maybe even more important than that is the fact that the Corinthian capital, at least in my opinion, looks the best from the most vantage points, because it's pretty much the same all the way around. Uh, the, the Doric is pretty severe. The Ionic looks best from certain angles where you can really see the volutes well, less well from other angles. But this looks pretty much the same wherever you see it. So it's a very flexible uh, and, and easy, easy to use uh, capital type.